Hello and welcome to the NVMe Hot Topics. So today the problem we're discussing is the people spitting versus non-spitting third nerve palsy. So what is the problem? The problem is that if you have two patients, both with the third nerve palsy, the cranial nerve three palsy, and one of them has a normal looking pupil and the other one has a more dilated pupil, can you tell the difference in the causes of these two patients? And the answer is yes, you can. But wait, what is the third nerve palsy? So if you remember the eye, eye wall is moved by six muscles and supplied by three cranial nerves, the cranial nerve three, four, and six. Now out of these three, the cranial nerve four and six each supply one muscle. So that makes it easy. The, the cranial nerve six uh, abduces nerve, supplies the left rectus muscle, moves the eye out, and the fourth cranial nerve, trochlear nerve, supplies the superior oblique muscle that moves the eye out, down, and internally rotated, which leaves all the other muscles supplied by the cranial nerve three. So if the cranial nerve three is not working, then the only muscles that are working are the two muscles supplied by fourth and sixth nerve. So both pulls the eye out, the superior oblique slightly depresses it, and slightly internally rotated. So our down and out eye is a third nerve palsy. Now, why would the pupil be spared and what does that have to do with the third nerve? Now, the pupil control is, is a, not a primary motor control, but a sympathetic or a parasympathetic motor control. So sympathetic fibers uh, cons uh, dilate the pupil and parasympathetic fibers constrict the pupil. So they're kind of trying to balance each other out. Those parasympathetic fibers actually run on the outer surface of cranial nerve. So they basically borrow the cranial nerve three as a highway to run from the brainstem where they're coming out all the way towards the eye. But they do not integrate into the center of the cranial nerve three. They do not mix along with it. They kind of cover the outer sheath or run in the sheath or covering of the third cranial nerve. So if a damage, hypothetically, compresses from the outside towards the inside to the third cranial nerve, they will involve the parasympathetic fibers and cause the dilation of the eye because of lack of constriction. And it might be the first sign where before even the cranial nerve third gets effective if the problem happens slow enough uh, or, or gradually enough. But eventually, of course, it will also involve the third cranial nerve. It may be that before the third cranial nerve is involved, you may not even notice it. And on the contrary, if the damage starts from inside out of the third cranial nerve, then it may damage the third cranial nerve without reaching the outer surface where the parasympathetic fibers are. And thus the pupil is spared, meaning that it has a balance of both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers as of a normal pupil diameter. Does it really happen? Uh, there are processes which causes compression from outside in and inside out? Yes, the outside in most common cause is an aneurysm. So there are blood vessels that run right next to the third cranial nerve and if they dilate, and they start beating on the third cranial nerve from the outside, start hitting and compressing on the third cranial nerve, they can cause that pupil involving or pupil non spinning third cranial nerve palsy. The problem inside out is usually not a compression, but more of an ischemia. So thus the nerves are always supplied with a blood vessel in the center of the nerve with a nervosum, so a nerve blood vessel. So the nerve has a blood vessels that sort of start in, in, uh, pierces it from the surface, goes into the center, run along the center. And if there is an ischemia of that blood vessel and a decrease in blood supply, then usually the problem starts or death of the cells, uh, nerves cell starts from the center out. The outside covering sometimes also have these micro blood vessels or capillaries that sometimes can give enough diffusion related food and oxygen to the outer surface that sometimes ischemia spares the outer part or outer sheath of the nerve completely, which in the third cranial nerve case carries the parasympathetic fiber. So if you have an ischemic mononeuropathy of the third cranial nerve, then you will have only pupil spinning third nerve palsy where the pupil will not be affected. These two are the most common reason for cranial nerve third palsy. So